going to start with the click spring and I've drilled and tapped my uh, hole for the click spring off the click I should say and next we're going to look at actually designing this <clears throat> and he actually says in the book that it's worth putting a piece of card up onto here drawing it out and then using that as a template to uh, file and cut it so that's what we're going to do now okay so we're making a start on the click I've got a piece of cardboard in there uh, I've got my M5 hole mat and I've just drawn on one of the teeth profiles and that distance there is roughly 1.125 so one and one eighth of an inch uh, distance from the top there just above the M5. It's only an approximation, like I say in the book he uh, recommends do this. So I'm guessing that's the tooth that it's looking at uh, engaging with, with the distance being set as such. Okay, so I'm going to take this off now and draw the rest of it. I've cut myself a little template. I uh, don't want to poke it through again. Um, don't want to poke it through again just because uh, it's, it's getting fragile and it's it's certainly one that uh, seems to be the best fit. Okay, so that's the click I'm drawn on a uh, sheet of gauge plate. I was going to uh, actually use the template, stick it on and cut it around, but actually I'm uh, confident that I can meet this line now that I've drawn on it. Um, I, I would love to know what glue people use actually for sticking uh, paper or card on metal. I don't know whether it's just me and not cleaning things properly, but I never ever get a good uh, seat. It always ends up tearing at the edges as I'm cutting. It tears the bit in front so you can't see where you're going. So uh, I'm more confident doing this method. Okay, let's see how it goes. Ping. Okay, so this is a uh, Hemingway filer and I've had it for a little while now. Um, the original Hemingway castings um, were actually so that this could be mounted onto a lathe uh, and then the lathe run the filer machine. But this one has got a uh, geared motor already attached, which is really nice. Uh, I've, I've had a die filer before, a proper industrial, I think it was a butterfly die filer, uh, and I did find it a little bit harsh. Um, obviously, I appreciate that's partly to do with what files you're going to use, but I, I just thought it was a little bit fast and a little bit bulky and a bit hard. This one is much, uh, much better. It uses standard files, but upside down. Um, which is another advantage of normal die filers, you have to buy the um, special files with the teeth the other way around, well, that's my understanding anyway. This one you just mount a, uh, a file in it upside down and that way it cuts on the downstroke so it pulls the material onto the bed rather than keep lifting it up every time. Okay, so let's just uh, give it a little go for a roughing out. Okay, so there's a piece of steel it came out of, and there is the final click. It just needs a little bit of polishing still on the edges, a little bit of a mark there. Um, needs probably a button turning up and uh, nicely profiling that edge. <laughs> Okay, so it's quite a big screw. I'm going to put quite a large uh, screw slot on it. A uh, number of screws I've messed up getting to this stage, so if anybody gives me any uh, tips, that would be fine. Uh, the way I've always done it is uh, using one of these files, basically, to start the, the slot um, and then come in secondly on top. I've not finished this yet, so come in secondly now with the, the correct thickness width of your file on top um, so bring the I'm going to slot this down I've taken it to depth uh, with a V but now I'm going to take it square with this file that looks pretty good to me right, 
outside for a minute and I'm really pleased with that uh, it polished up well in actual fact I did the final polish off uh, camera I've uh, I've done it before and it's actually using the back of the sandpaper so it literally is just like using a sheet of paper so that's not really in focus so this is a click spring it's going to be uh, cut from uh, roughly four mil just under actually three three and a half mil brass um, and it's going to be cut from flat and then bent round uh, to form the spring okay just working go. my way through cutting this started off using a jeweler saw and then ended up using a hacksaw got through it in about three minutes compared to about what five millimeters in 10 minutes with a jeweler saw so I'm just going to lob this off next then I will get the jeweler saw out just to profile the end and start filing it up to shape Okay, so we're going to try and bend this now. Um, we're going to try and bend it around this uh, three and three quarter inch former, and we'll see how it goes. I don't know how easy it's going to be to bend. Okay, I can tell you now, very easy, very easy indeed. Okay, so I'm going to come off camera now, and I'm going to keep going to turn this and keep bending it around. It's going to be a bit difficult because obviously I can't get that all the way down, but. Certainly if I push that in a bit more, I'll be able to uh, hopefully get more of a bend on it. Okay, well, it's got late. Um, I've put everything together and this is going to be the end of the video. Um, so I've got the click, the uh, click screw, and also the spring in place. The spring definitely needs polishing up and finishing. Um, but ultimately now it works. So you can see that you're going to get a nice click back down on that spring and the click fits nicely bearing in mind that the weight will be driving it in this anti-clockwise direction so therefore it will click and then immediately lock back in place on the new gear so really pleased with that um, and just need to clean it up a little bit I must admit but it's working so next step now um hopefully start having a look at actually mounting some of these uh, parts on the uh, on the actual frame itself okay thanks for watching uh hopefully we'll get another one uh, video out soon i'll keep going with this to towards christmas cheers